It is in moments of decision that one's fate is shaped. I sealed mine long ago, bargaining power from the demon world. Now who doesn't like lots of action? And hands up who can while away hours within a personal RPG title, crafting your skills, powers and appearance while a kingdom cries out for your help. And here I thought I was the last living hunter in this damn city. So merging the two into a fully fledged action RPG can only deliver the best of both worlds, and this game has more than one. Victor Vran has finally ridden onto consoles, and he may be familiar to some. Until recently it was but a naive dream. Then I heard of the Astrolabe. It has action, RPG, Geralt, the greatest witcher ever. If only it had a hard rock soundtrack and even wilder rock legend, it would reach a whole new... <gasps> oh my god. The game has been available on PC for a while, hitting the early access in its original form in 2015 and then moved into full PC release a while later, but now packed out with tons of extra content levels and an equally over the top title. The Overkill Edition which is available on PC as DLC or the consoles, or you can buy the whole thing as one package on the Xbox One and PS4, which is the version I am covering here. So let's mix up some potions and whip out our weapons as we go demon slaying. Bulgarian developers Hemimont Games have been around for a while, making city sims, RPGs, and even enough time to create their very own engine, which has been used to power many of these titles and again here with Victor Vram. This is always a double-edged sword, as in one corner, you have an engine that you have complete control over, from physics, AI logic, animation, shaders, the whole shebang. As the source code is all your own, some of the issues that can happen when you do not have a huge amount of experience or budget team can be fixed or changed directly, which will improve performance. But on the other, this is a much larger overhead to manage versions, source code and bugs, as you have to dedicate a portion of your time and budget to maintain the engine rather than making the game itself, and mistakes in a path taken can be very costly indeed. This is why Unity is so common in smaller indie titles being easier to get the basics of making a game down without all the cumbersome overhead that can happen with other engines and certainly your own, but it needs slightly more TLC to keep your performance high, a trade-off for the base higher abstraction. Not an issue for this team who have the skills to manage both and the results are clear to see. A standard isometric angle is used that nicely coincides with the engine's default views and artist experiential asset use. With the right stick controlling the camera so you can spin around and see the enemies move out from behind walls. Something that is also taken care of with a nice transparency filter that cools any object between your character and the camera point or clipping plane. Having the option to move through is very welcome and helps you explore the surroundings when looking for secret boxes or sections, something the game is crammed full of. You start the game with a choice of which world you want to dive into. Vran is the main one but there are two others which we'll cover later. It also adds in a jump mechanic meaning ledges' depth and crumbled walls also take on a new slant for you. It also adds in a combat element stomping down in a jump, something added into the combat as certain attacks can scare enemies off, buying you some time now to gather your thoughts. You? Now each world has its own story that plays out with a mix of static but well crafted art for characters with decent voice times. acting. If you report what you find there, you have my permission. It also has some stylish graphic novel animations reminiscent of The Witcher 3 that unfold some of the longer story moments and pre-rendered sections also crop up at times to introduce boss moments that unlock other parts of the map. Now these are all linked with a central hub and in the main game, this is the kingdom that you arrived at to help remove the onslaught of demons and death, it is played with. For Lemmy's world though, this is a pub, fitting indeed. Exploring the gardens, dungeons and catacombs, slaying all that dare step your way is the order of the day. Earning extra weapons, powers and skills which can be used to ramp up your damage from attacks, extend your health all the standard RPG elements you expect. Now this includes outfitting yourself from a choice of outfits early on, an extra free DLC that can get the catwalk look you are after. No excuse here to not look cool when you're knee deep in claret. Two weapons can be equipped at any time and quickly flick between them with a touch of the R1 button. These have a standard move and then two separate special moves that have a burn meter. 
Once used, they need to build back up before a repeat. This is a nice combat style, and mixing up a ranged weapon and a more powerful melee weapon delivers a smooth and satisfying combat system as you string them in combos rolling out of the way when an attack is depleted. Flicking between the two weapons, they each have their own burn meter. You can effectively use four special moves in succession. Throw in the magical powers and you can quickly rain down the pain on the undead army like a true witch hunter. The range of enemies is vast in number and variety. You get spiders, skeletons, lumbering hammer thugs, floating ghouls, devil dogs and many more that can fill the screen at times. Few are fast but the sheer number of them can be overpowering. Later on they get much tougher and the need to increase your power and weapons becomes the biggest key to survive the constant onslaught. Online titles or online sections can get much tougher indeed as obviously the difficulty is ramped up using the attacks to go behind the characters with them defending you if you just keep attacking from the front. Now exploration is key, extra side tombs can be tackled with each area having a group of in-game challenges that can tackle you with the game itself. Once done, a flag marking your epic heroics is your reward and obviously the more important coinage to spend on whatever trinkets you deem fitting. This is the path of events and even in single lone player this is a ton of fun but its Diablo aims are even clearer with up to four players online co-op allowing you to tackle the demonic world with friends or strangers and this is where the game takes on a new life and can be very enjoyable as you clear out the zones in unison. Another nice touch is the instant gratification the game has, earning skills, powers and weapons early on means you do not have to grind your way to become good enough to tackle the bigger enemies. Instead, you pick an outfit and then pick and choose as you go. The Demon Powers Destiny card can be used to customize and strengthen your avatar as you play, rather than locking you into prefix class at the start. I am a big fan of this. The story is decent, but falls well within your standard Kingdom Under Fire category, not hiding its Van Helsing inspiration at all. No shocking revelations, just enough character disposition there, to keep the game moving with more tongue-in-cheek motorhead the narrative to back up the three wheels to choose from. Hmm, the third of these available as DLC or in the full overkill edition is the Fractured World, which is actually randomly generated worlds and areas, each section being different every time you join, and this includes online co-op with you all playing together in the same area that is generated for all of you. And this does mix up the levels and obviously makes everyone different and the enemy allocations each time you play, including the lighting and the time of day in each area, so that's a very nice touch indeed. The voice work is solid and much unfolds in Blade Runner like self narration or even voices from above mocking you, teasing you and guiding you along. The smell hits you right away, not the stale dry smell of a tomb. No, this is another all too familiar smell, the smell of rotting flesh. So Victor ran away. Bravely ran away, away, when danger reared its ugly head. He bravely turned his tail and fled. Bravest of the brave. This is accompanied by a non-intrusive soundtrack that rumbles in the background or a rock riff from songs you may recognize, depending on the story you are partaking in. effects are decent with a mixture of dialogue and effects allowing them to fade into the background so this is always clear deep thuds from gunshots magical powers all demon arrivals carry presence using spatial mixing well with your sound system or earphones of choice it never really stands out as a high point of the title but it does not let it down either which is probably the most appropriate praise i can levy at it visually it is clean and a well crafted game the sheer number of enemies on screen and effects is very impressive at times filling the screen with explosions, particles and hit markers, forming you of your sheer awesomeness. Texture quality is again of a high standard and even under close inspection it holds up well with great filtering, certainly around the 8 times and maybe even higher but it doesn't affect any of the quality here with great touches on the walls and floors and every object you see. The 1080p display here on PS4 is crisp at all times and the artwork never suffers with shimmer or edges at all, mostly. The engine is most likely forward rendering based with a decent MSA solution running across all edges and this is helped further with minimal shader specular leaving strong IQ across all sections including the aforementioned texture work. The animated narrative sections also benefit from the sharp image quality the game offers. Now the Xbox One version which I don't have does sacrifice the image slightly to 900p and the PS4 Pro version which I have got 
pushes this beyond with a dynamic solution in place, scaling the resolution from a pretty much standard 2560 by 1440 from all my accounts, most likely down to a 1080p, but I haven't got any counts from a few that I've done that drop anywhere below the 1440. And this adds extra sharpness and clarity that is really appreciated on a 4K TV, but it does also super sample so you get the same benefit on a 1080p display. Now, aside this good use of the extra GPU, the game's visuals are the same on both PlayStation versions. Now, screen space effects are used to enhance the quality further from SSAO, adding contact shadows across the game's surfaces. Cube maps are used to give metallic surfaces a nice shine from the light source area or color. And some directional lights are used at times to cast shadows from nearby scenery or characters, which are of a high quality. But these can error at times though, with them turning on or off within the view culling area, meaning shadows can appear and then disappear along with them. But this is a minor bug and only noticed in some small isolated sections. Destruction plays its part with sections being weak to your attacks, open up extra gifts sections, or just for the game's challenges alone. Other post effects include a Gaussian doff blur on distant views or when in the narrative sections, but the biggest effects work comes from the magic attacks, the explosions, and the enemies in the game. Alpha transparency from bomb dropping planes, demonic Harry Potter like screen warp inspectors, to huge snaggle tooth machines that fill the screen with fire and brimstone. It never lets up on the pyrotechnics, and with a vast array of spells, bombs, and attacks, it delivers on that level in spades. This also never hampers the game's performance to any meaningful degree. From many hours of play, the examples you can see are representative of its level of performance. 60 FPS is the target, and it hits it 99.9% .9 of the time, with only very small dips of no more than an extra refresh into the 33 millisecond time, giving us an all-time low of 56 on the PS4, which is another commendable level and shows the team's engine is both impressive and performant along with it being fully adapted to support both console APIs in addition to its PC origins, a tough lesson they learned from Tropica 5. They also intelligently alternate the animation, physics or alpha effects at times when it becomes very stressed when you maybe sometimes would notice this for a second or so as objects, explosions and the camera movement can update in turn at 33 millisecond intervals. Now this is not that uncommon in engines, with many titles using this from animation ranges, and even in the same mix method here. Frostbite, for example, also had this option as I've covered before. Now it stops the game from dropping complete frames and keeps the response rate and refresh rate as high as possible at the slight cost of animation judder, and also only on rare occurrences. Online is as stable as the single player sections, with no problems fighting games or joining lobbies. I even tested, as you can see on screen here, dual PS4s with captions showing the same game from two connections, the PS4 and the PS4 Pro. It is smooth and solid in single player or multiplayer action, which will be where many will spend their time completing the single player or games or other challenges online with friends or strangers alike. The only minor gripe is the intro to the catacombs is running at 30 fps, but it does have a nice motion blur which doesn't appear present in the 60 fps game mode. But this again is a minor niggle, but if the whole game is running at 60 it would be nice to see the whole menu sections also following suit. Now the final part of my suite of tests is the loading test and between the PS4 and the PS4 Pro. It's very close, it's around 4 seconds quicker on the Pro using the hardware to load the same map in 17 seconds rather than 21 or just over 21 on the PS4. So you do get a small boost on loading times, but generally in both versions, the loading times are very quick and efficient, so you shouldn't take too long to jump between the worlds. As a new twist on the action RPG from the likes of The Witcher 3, Dark Souls, or even the seminal Diablo, it fits into and holds up well. Much easier on the player from the start, but with a linear difficulty that ramps up the further you delve into the game. Be this the standard Victor World or the DLC Overkill Editions Motorhead, with Lemmy as a rock god saviour, it does not take itself too seriously, and the Fractured World and its alternating procedurally generated worlds. It's all varied in design to explore, and your character traits, skills, and powers are all transferable between worlds, and dual play is also possible. 
It does not offer anything really brand new over others in the genre, but this is a very competent title in all areas, from visual, story, acting options and performance, including using the PS4 Pro to increase the clarity further, which is again is a commendable achievement that some teams have left off their cards. But if you are looking for a new story to unfold and demons to slay, then you could do far worse than give the game a try. For the base game's £15.99 or $20 asking price, it does pack in a huge amount of content and around 20 hours of story action and many, many more online with co-op. DLC or the full pack review here, which is $40 or around £31, it really could bite into your time. Oh dear, sorry. Well, as always, if you guys and girls enjoyed this, then please think about subscribing and liking and maybe also supporting me on Patreon now that I've launched my new page. You can check out my explanation of why I've done that in the video link below. Please leave all your thoughts and feedback below. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll catch you guys and girls on the next one. And Rebels is over. The time of mine machine has come.